Okay, I was creating a demo package uh, for one of my videos um, and I had it already created my SQL server connections and everything else inside of Talent. Um, but once I started the video I, re I started seeing lots of errors and um, realized that actually maybe I should make a video on how to get your connection to SQL Server and what problems you might run into. Okay, so what, that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. Unfortunately, I'm going to go backwards uh, through the kind of things I ran into. Uh, instead of real time, you're just going to see uh, what I, you know, what what, what aftermath of the, my experience was. And, um, you know, being an ETL developer, some of your hardest things is make you know you you kind of wear a lot of different hats. You develop, you do, you know, you develop in databases, you develop in ETL tools. You also have to be kind of a network guy because you have to connect to all these different kinds of um, data sources. So there's a whole bunch of stuff you're doing, you know, besides just plain old writing code right you know you have to get the connections built you got to look at those error messages you got to google stuff it's it's a lot of work um you know to get things set up right once you get things set up right things go a lot smoother but initially um everything you know you have to get things set up so let me just show you some of the things i ran into on this um when creating this demo um well first of all right i, I start off with not, I start off with everything deactivated. In fact, I, did, I don't even have, I don't even have these on on the screen. What I do is I just start off with a connection, and in this case, I had the connection, and um, I went to settings, and basically I set up these context, um, this context for SQL Server here. Okay, so we'll see it actually in the settings. So if I bring the settings down here. Okay, and we look at um, uh, one moment. So let me get, bring a context on here. So what that to do is go to Windows View Context. Okay, and then bring and drag that whole this whole thing over here. Um, okay, so let me just open that up a little bit more. So basically, I was setting up a contest for the SQL Server, right? Just like so. Um, what then happened was that I was getting errors. So the first thing I did was I said, okay, well, maybe I did something wrong with my, my context setup, so let me hard code some things. So I started off hard coding um, the, the uh, host name. And from that, I found uh, it was saying that the connection was didn't work and um, and that prompted me to try more things uh, and one of the things that it needed was a double it needed to escape out that backslash so I did that that got rid of one error another error that and then another error that was happening was it by default it's set to open source JTS JTDS and so what I did was I, I tr it still wouldn't connect so then I tried and I set it to Microsoft so when I set it to Microsoft it started giving me some error saying it didn't have the components um, for Microsoft the the Java um, the Java drivers for for the Microsoft SQL Server so at that point I had to go and figure out where those uh, drivers were and bring those down so it's one thing after another but I'm, again I'm just talking through it because you might very well experience this kind of thing and um, you know it's good to hear it hear it and uh, get some ideas so um, once I found out that there is some, you know, they call them jars, uh, Java, they're Java drivers for specific components. Um, and it said proprietary, so I thought, first thought was, oh, well, they're going to try to chart, you know, you, they, that's how you, they're going to have you get a, you know, buy a, go to Enterprise Edition. Um, but then with further research, I figured, I found out that you didn't have to do that. But let's just, what you do is to find out which ones you are missing and how to get those jars you go into view and you go into or rather you go to window and you go into show view and in the show view you type in module okay and when you go into modules 
under Talon. When you open that up, it, it starts a wizard. And in this wizard, it tells you all sorts of different connection types um, that you you are you have installed or you're missing. In this case, I've already installed these, but at that point in time, I hadn't had them installed. Now I have it filtered to MS SQL, so let's just open that up. And now we're going to see a whole bunch of. Now you see all the runs with red in them. Those aren't installed. Now you don't might not need these. So if you have T, uh, DB2, if you don't use DB2, don't bother installing it, right? So let's say, for example, you have, you have Redshift, okay? Let's see if Redshift comes up here. So I'm typing in Redshift. And as you see here, the Redshift output row connection, these aren't installed. So I'm going to have to get those drivers eventually because I'm going to be doing some demos with Redshift. So. Um, but anyways, we, I did get the Microsoft, uh, the MS SQL, okay, uh, these guys, because that's what I was going to demo in, and um, and at the time it had these that they were not installed. So what I did was um, I Googled them and found uh, a site where I could download the uh, the library. Okay, so the library was let's see. Actually, let's go ahead and do the Redshift one while we're at it. So let's go Redshift. Here's some other ones here. I'm going to download those. Okay. They're saying download here, so I have to go to download. It's downloading the jars. And now they're installed. Okay, if you're lucky, that's way it works. Uh, the, the MS SQL. I, I believe I had to go out to Google and find the the uh, the jar. So, anyways, this already downloaded it. So that's a good thing. So um, let's go back up here and see what we can do with those guys. And it comes in under the license. I'm gonna download that. I accept the terms, okay. I accept all, okay. Now they are installed, okay. So that's a good thing. So if you're if you're in good shape, sometimes you'll be able to come in here and just be able to uh, download those. So let's just see what happens here. Looks like some more that I could. I'm probably going to need. So I'm going to go and download. I come over here. I say download and install. Now, if you don't need Redshift, you wouldn't you wouldn't do this because you're just adding extra layers of Java drivers to your um, to your app and to your computer that you don't need. And no one needs more complexity if you don't need if you, if it's not necessary. Okay, so that's how I got the um, the Microsoft the MS SQL component uh, to work. Um, by getting those Java drivers in, and so after that, right, um, I went to go ahead. I went ahead and to run this again. So when I ran it, um, let me just kind of again. This is not real time. So when I ran it next, it still wouldn't connect. Um, it would connect. It would. It, it acknowledged my host name was correct, but then it started saying that it was uh, not able to connect um, through the uh, port one four three three fourteen thirty three, uh, which is the default um, port for SQL Server. So what I had to do then is my first thought was, okay, I need to open that firewall. Okay, so I, I go ahead and do a search on firewall. I get the firewall network protection, the Defender firewall, go into Defender firewall. I go into advanced settings here. And I need to set up an inbound rule. Okay, so here's my inbound rules over here. And I set up a new rule right there. Okay. And through this, I go through this exercise of it's a port I want to make sure the port is open. Well, first of all, actually, before I do that, I go through the inbound rules and see because it's going to be inbound to the SQL server. Um, so I go to my 
port and um, I sort on port and I'm looking for 1433 right so at the time I didn't see it here so I wanted to open up that port and um, so with that I created a new rule to open that port so just to go through the steps of the, of the uh, creating that I went to port now I'm on the local computer and I'm doing talent on local computer might actually not need this probably don't but if you're using you know if you're going using talent on another server and you're going to your SQL server you'll probably gonna need this port to be open uh, in some way you work with your network people make sure it's secure uh, so I go there I put in the TCP IP I mean TCP and I say 1433 next and then here you decide what you want to allow uh, who you want to allow in okay and next and then you put that again uh, wh when does the rule apply etc and next and then you can name your rule okay so basically I went through that and I named my rule okay and uh, lo and behold I went back to my SQL server okay okay and then I went ahead and restarted my SQL server and I reran the uh, the job and it failed again. It gave an error that said um, connection. There's a TCP IP um, blockage type of message. Um, so it still had the same TCP IP problem. So um, after that, I did some I, some Googling and the uh, I I found that that they they mentioned to go ahead and use this config uh, go to the configuration manager in SQL server so SQL uh, management okay so basically let me just find that article right um, uh, this fella Dave he uh, he had a nice article on it and he uh, mentioned that you, you you know even if you can't find your SQL server configuration manager sometimes it's still on your computer so just search for uh, you know this 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 file name since I'm using 17 I went ahead and uh, incremented that by uh, 1 uh, to 14 I searched for it and uh, lo and behold it was on my computer uh, and when I came in here I did a couple things so number one I went in the network server and I'm a, this is the name of the uh, instance I'm running went to TCIP IP I noticed it was disabled so I went in there and I enabled it okay that's one thing I did and another article and then I rebooted uh, I restarted and it still didn't work and then I came back over here again and I went I went to network configuration again I went into the TCP IP where I enabled before I went to properties and I went to IP addresses and in IP addresses what happened was at the very bottom um, I had an IP all okay and what the article suggested was that if that if this TCP port is blank go ahead and put in your TCP port there so I did that uh, I then restarted my uh, SQL server service which was right here right there oops and then I restarted okay and I went back and lo and behold my um, my error uh, for that said the TCP IP uh, wouldn't connect uh, wouldn't get through the was blocked was no longer there that what problem was not there but I had a new error my new error just said that the user ID wasn't uh, you know it wasn't accepting my user ID so my user ID which is um, right here let's take a look at that so if I look at the uh, if I go here and I look at uh, let's see, go settings, I see my component, my um, SQL, my username is SQL Server user is contact SQL Server user ID. So what that means is that if I go in, I look at my contacts, which is this tab, and I look at that name, SQL Server User ID, Talon User ID. Okay, so I go to my SQL Server and I look under. Here's my SQL Server running under SQL Server uh, SQL 2017 tab, 
and I see my talent user just like I set him up or her and uh, let's see so I set up the user I set him up as a SQL server uh, uh, login right not a Windows authentication and um, but what I didn't do was I didn't give it any user mappings okay so I gave it some user mappings master and talent okay and in talent I made I gave it a DBO uh, DB owner rather okay and then master I just gave it a uh, public okay so I could get it so I said cancel um, I then went back to the talent and ran it and it gave me um, the same error it's gave me the error that the that this user which is spelled correctly and everything uh, would not be accepted and was not what could not be logged in so a week or two ago at work, I, I remember that I had a problem like this before, and what happened, we had just set up a new server in AWS, and they, um, a SQL server, and we we just, I guess we just took all the defaults. I wasn't there when they set it up, but they, they did all the defaults, and, the, and they and then one of the defaults is Windows authentication only. So um, what we had to do was go in, and the same thing as I did here, you go into properties on the server, and you go to security and in this area here where it says SQL uh, server authentication by default it's Windows authentication which was my mine, mine was also set to that so here I went and said SQL server and Windows authentication mode and once I did that and said OK and went back in then I got past the user ID and the connection worked so these were the things I ran into with the SQL server connection um, in Talon uh, there could be many others um, but you know just try to be patient read the error closely you know and keep trying things and um you know googling google as you need to of course and uh you try to get through it but it's, it takes uh, persistence and patience and um you know i i tend to sometimes think oh the, the there's something wrong with the software first <laughs> so i'm blaming the software but uh nine times out of ten it's not the software it's probably uh it's uh myself and my lack of knowledge in that area but that's what we what we you know have to keep working at so don't get try not to get too frustrated and but it is frustrating okay i hope you this helped you somehow and uh thanks bye